the sneeze reflex, a natural defense reaction against foreign particles and pathogens such as bacteria and viruses. A defense reaction with a risk of infection for the human respiratory tract. Like tiny pirates, the pathogens board the mucous membrane and cling tightly to it. This process is called adhesion, and it is just the beginning. The viruses forge their way towards the cells and enter them. It is like a chain reaction. Once inside, the viruses force the cells to exclusively produce new viruses, which in turn attack other cells where they multiply explosively. The result, an acute infection of the respiratory tract. At first, the symptoms are quite harmless, a tickle in the nose, a scratch in the throat. Then the situation gets more complicated because this is a descending infection. It goes on to affect the larynx and the bronchial tubes. And only then does the patient go and see a doctor, which means that in daily practice, we're usually dealing with a fully developed disease. Main reason why antibiotics are often used too early but unnecessarily is the fear of a bacterial superinfection, which is indeed serious but fairly rare. This is a tough and long-lasting condition, starting with an inflammation of the mucous membranes. The removal of mucus is hampered by evident flaws in the carpet of cilia. Too many cells have already died. The mucus accumulates and thickens. The airways become congested, resulting in a tickle in the throat and an urge to cough. For the bacteria, some of which can always be found on the mucous membranes, the situation could not possibly be any better. Up to this point, the body has been able to keep them under control. Now, however, in the accumulated mucus, they gain the upper hand as this is the perfect environment for them to proliferate. But there are ways to keep this from happening. There are, of course, plenty of alternatives for antibiotics in natural medicine. For instance, there are herbal remedies with the same or similar mechanisms of action as antibiotics, which means they have anti-infective effects. To these drugs, the bacteria have not yet learned to develop resistance, and this is the key point. Plants are much older than man. They've been around for billions of years, and before plants there were bacteria. They are even older. Thus, in a manner of speaking, there has been a constant struggle between bacteria and fungi on one hand and plants on the other ever since the world began. The bacteria and fungi are trying to kill off the plants, just as they're trying to kill us humans. The plants, however, over billions of years have developed an arsenal of natural substances in defense against the fungi and bacteria. Thus, many plants have succeeded in developing substances which, fortunately, we are now able to use to our own benefit, as the bacteria have not learned to develop any resistances against them. And this is really fantastic. Even under the most adverse climatic conditions and attacked by millions of microorganisms in the soil, plants still manage to survive. One such plant that braves microbial loads as well as severe changes in climate is Pelargonium sidoides. The roots of this South African species of geranium have special powers which were highly appreciated even by the ancient natives. And now, of course, we have the situation that as our classic antibiotics are losing their efficacy, for instance, due to the development of resistances, we're increasingly looking for new options. So now, basically, we're once again looking for old traditional forms of treatment. This is, in a manner of speaking, the rebirth of herbal remedies. It was a European who more than a hundred years ago experienced its unique benefits firsthand. In 1897, Charles Henry Stevens from England, suffering from severe tuberculosis, made a journey to South Africa. It wasn't the climate, however, which cured him in the end, but a four-month therapy with a brew from the boiled roots of Pelargonium sidoides. It was Stevens who subsequently established this plant in English and continental European medicine. Thus, as early as 1920, more than 800 patients were successfully treated with a preparation of Pelargonium sidoides by the Swiss physician Seshai. This has been documented in a comprehensive and detailed publication. In some regions, however, such as the Eastern Cape and Lesotho, 
Pelagonium is still collected in the wild with special permits from the authorities. The company attaches great importance to the fact that this is done by skilled local collectors in accordance with applicable criteria of sustainability. After three to four years when the active constituents in the roots of the Pelagonium plant are fully matured, it is harvested for processing. At the production site, the drug is then made into a herbal medicinal product. Pelagonium sidoides extracts are among the best studied phytopharmaceuticals we have today. As far as efficacy is concerned, the situation with regard to studies is excellent. To my knowledge, there are close to 10,000 patients involved in studies and almost half of these in control trials. What's particularly important for this indication is that it has a lot to do with children. There are also studies available which involve children. The exact pharmacological profile of effects was investigated by scientists from the University of Freiburg in Germany. As is already apparent from their ongoing research, the anti-infective effects observed so far are directed against a broad spectrum of pathogens. We have we did a total of seven studies in order to find out what effect does this substance have. And one would have to say its effects are primarily immunological. Thus, for instance, it has been proven that the risk of adhesion of viruses and bacteria was substantially reduced by a protective film coating on the mucous membrane cells. So, in a manner of speaking, their attack is thwarted right at the very surface. But even if, for lack of such prevention, the viruses have already gained ground on the mucous membranes, Pelagonium sidoides is still effective. It activates the body's natural defense system. Natural killer cells are mobilized. They enter the mucous membrane cells that have been seized by viruses and kill them off. This deprives the virus of its basis for reproduction, while also leaving it susceptible to the body's defense system. This is where the macrophages come in, so-called scavenger cells, which are also powered to top performance by EPS 7630. Like the tentacles of an octopus, the evaginations of these cells move in on the intruders from all sides, leaving them no chance for survival. But the scavenger cells don't stop at that. They also ingest and destroy any other cells that are injured or damaged until the mucous membrane is thoroughly cleaned of any debris that interfered with its normal function and can recover. Bacteria don't stand much of a chance either when exposed to this natural extract. Its active substance renders them unable to multiply any further. Stimulated by Pelagonium sidoides, the cilia of the mucous membrane simultaneously increase their frequency by up to 40%. Mucus is removed more efficiently, the nose begins to run, the swelling of the mucous membrane subsides, the airways open up, the infection is under control. For a medicinal product to obtain a marketing authorization in Germany, studies regarding its pharmaceutical quality and mechanisms of action must be complemented by trials with human patients to confirm its efficacy and tolerability. Thus, more than 3,800 patients were involved in controlled double-blind trials and more than 5,400 patients in open-label trials and post-marketing surveillance studies. Another important aspect, for socio-economic reasons as well as from the individual's own perspective, is the patient's working ability. After one week, 62% of patients in the EPS 7630 group were able to go back to work, as compared to only 36% in the placebo group. The studies conducted with children posed a particular challenge. For 70% of all medicinal products used in pediatrics, there are no specific pharmacological studies available. With Pelagonium sidoides, the situation is different. In two placebo-controlled trials involving more than 450 children and adolescents, a very good efficacy and tolerability was demonstrated. The Schwaber company went ahead and did placebo-controlled trials starting from the first year of life. 
The youngest child in these large studies, with a total of 800 children, was just barely one year old. And that was when it became quite obvious that EPS 7630 is very effective, that it heals infants, youngsters, as well as adolescents much, much faster. After only three to five days, they felt fitter as compared to the placebo group. We have the immunomodulatory effect. We take advantage of that to speed up recovery. But the immune system still has to deal with the pathogen, so that the memory, the memory effect of the immune system will still be developed. But regardless of all the impressive evidence from state-of-the-art scientific studies on the mechanism of action and the multitude of clinical trials which have substantiated the unique benefits of EPS 7630 that 30 million satisfied patients have come to appreciate, namely its quick action and good tolerability, the extract of Pelagonium sidoides is still a subject of extensive research. I'm positive that even more potential applications will be found in the future. After all, research is making continuous progress, so we'll be able to use EPS 7630 in all kinds of respiratory tract infections, not only in acute bronchitis, sinusitis or angina. After all, we're really only at the beginning of our research, not only with regard to EPS 7630, but with research into the mechanisms of action of herbal medicinal products in general. Today, there's a general trend towards natural and herbal medicinal products. However, the public has become much more critical. They not only want tradition, they also want current evidence, which I think to a great extent has been accomplished in the case of EPS 7630.